Hi, my name is Jeff Orock, and I'm the meteorologist in charge at the National Weather Service office in Wakefield, Virginia. I'm going to spend just a few minutes here talking about the brand new radar interface that's officially coming online in mid-December. There's already a preview version of this new interface on the web, which will give you a chance to interact with the website, learn how to use it, or we'll show you some tips and tricks because it is a much more interactive uh, mapping type of a system compared to the old radar website, which will eventually be phased out here in December of 2020. Um, from the, our National Weather Service office and Wakefield website, there's our URL. We've already put a link to the new radar interface here at the very top of our website in our top news. So if you go to our top news, you can click there and it will take you to a brand new tutorial website uh, that's already been set up by a neighboring National Weather Service office. So go to the top news and you click there, it'll pull up this uh, web page, which is the not, a really great you know, how to tutorial on how to use the new web interface. And I'm not going to cover this verbatim, but you notice as you scroll down the web page, there's a lot of good information of uh, how to zoom in the page, how to uh, basically your loop controls, looking at different types of radar imagery. Um, it really goes through everything we're going to talk about here in the next several minutes. So when we're done here, you can always go back to this website um, and look at the actual written tutorial and really kind of learn how to use all these different little tips and tricks. And once you start using the web page, you really start to find it to be you know, pretty intuitive. So let's just get right to it. And let's actually look at the new, the new radar website um, and, how it's, and how it's set up. So this is the new radar web page. Again, it's more of a mapping type of an interface um, and I'll throw up the URL so you can kind of see where to go to to practice there in the bottom right hand corner. Um, you can actually see where you can get into the uh, website now, even though it's not official and start to interact with this and play with it a little bit. So when you first come to the web page, you'll notice you come out to this really zoomed out, you know, uh, conus view that shows really the entire um, really North American continent. Um, you can zoom in. You do have your zoom controls here in the bottom left hand corner. So if I push a little plus sign, um, I can obviously zoom the map in. You can you know interact with the map and pan it back and forth, left and right, up and down. Um, you can also turn the looping controls on. Your looping control down here with the little arrow, I will put the radar into motion. Um, and you can actually turn the looping controls off. So that's how you control uh, the loops. Um, and then your zoom in, zoom out is down here at the bottom left. And we'll, cut, we'll talk more about zooming in and out here in just a moment. Before we go any farther, one thing I do want to make sure you, you, you see is these three bars here in the upper left hand corner. Um, and these are, these are your base layer maps. So when I click on this, it opens up the interface where I can change my background map. So let's say I, I'm in a, a dark room. I don't really want a bright map. I could be in an EOC. I could be kind of running in a kind of a dark area, maybe I'm out, out in an incident where things, you know, it's at nighttime. And I don't want to have this bright image in my face. Uh, you can change your background maps. You can turn on dark canvas. Um, and so now you see here things have gotten much darker. The radar display, you know, obviously is, is still overlaid. You've just changed your background map. Um, you can turn on the satellite view if you want to kind of see more of the, of the satellite type of features. Um, you can also go to a topographic type of map if you want. Um, so you have a lot of different options here of what's actually being displayed. And then you can turn on your states um, and then even turn on your counties um, and start to overlay things and get more of these layers turned on. And I'll, I'll stop there, but uh, these are your layer controls um, right here in the upper uh, left hand corner. And you just click on these three little bars and that will allow you to change your map and change your different backgrounds. And we'll go ahead and close that now that we've got it the way that we like it. Now, going back to some of the zoom controls, we talked about how you can use these bottom buttons here in the, in the left hand corner. You can also just zoom the map by double clicking. Um, so if I double click on different locations, like here I'm double clicking on Central Virginia, it continues to zoom in. Um, so as I continue to click on it, uh, my zoom continues to enhance. And one thing I want to show you as well is that let's say I move my map and I really like this view right here. And this is the way I want it to come up every time I visit the website. What's really nice about the web interface is that every time I move the map or click, look, look up here at the very top um, in the URL. So really, really up here where I'm highlighting at the very, very top of the web page. Notice that as I move the map around, notice how that URL is changing. So the nice thing about that is, is once I, let's say I set it just like this, send it on Central Virginia, um, I can see most of the state, maybe I'll move it to the right. So now I can see most of the state of Virginia. Let's say I really like this view. Um, 
So all I have to do is to go up here and just add it to my bookmarks. I can just basically add it and say, okay, this is NWS Radar. And I click done and I'm good. And, and it's saved in my bookmarks. I can save it to my desktop if I want. You can do the same thing on your smartphones. You bookmark it right to your, your smartphone page and it, it's always right there. So when you click on that link that you've bookmarked and you've saved, it'll default to this type of a view, which is really, really great. Um, and if you do continue to double click, notice you'll continue to zoom in, you know, even more and more. So it's just a matter of how much you want to be either zoomed in. Um, if you want to zoom back out, you do have to hit the zoom out button here in the lower left hand corner to kind of get that bigger picture, that, that broader view. Now, once we have our zoom set um, and we can see the reflectivity the way that we want it, we see the radar the way that we want it. Um, now we can look at different types of radar products and we'll get into that. So you come up here to where you see these two little, looks like two pieces of paper on top of each other and it's your view select. So I hit select view and this controls what I'm looking at on the screen. So right now we're looking at a national mosaic. This is where all the different national weather service radars are interlaced together. So you're seeing the big picture of what's going on with all the different radars all at the same time. So you know, I, I have the National Mosaic running. When I click that, you do see that some of the uh, current watches and warnings have actually popped up. Um, this is the areas where we have flood warnings right now. Um, in fact, you can kind of do the down arrow here and you can see all the different flood warnings that are in your display. And so notice that if I, if I zoom in the display a little bit, let's say I just zoom in on Hampton Roads and I, I kind of move the Raleigh area out, notice how it updates to say, okay, it's just one alert and it's one flash flood warning covering, in this example, Virginia Beach and parts of uh, the Eastern Shore. Um, so as you move the map around, you'll notice this will actually all update and it will list, it'll basically highlight all the different alerts that are currently valid um, in your view. Um, now you do notice that the alerts are kind of overriding the, the radar image, so you can't really see what's going on. So if you don't want to see that, come over here to these three dots, you click on those three dots, turn off these storm-based warnings and notice they disappear and you don't have to worry about it as much anymore. But if you want to see the alerts, come back to the three dots and then turn your storm-based warnings back on and off. That's how you toggle those. Notice too, you also have this transparent button. So this is where um, you can turn this on and off. You turn the uh, transparency of the map off and now you really can see the radar data really well. But if you wanna actually see where the showers and storms are located you know, based on highways and cities, just turn the transparency back on. And now as I zoom in, let's say down here, I can really get a good sense for where the showers and storms are. And as I zoom in, you get more and more towns actually starting to show up on the map, a little bit more um, resolution to it. So what I'll do is I'll zoom out here a little bit more uh, once again. And so we're still on the National Mosaic. And so you know, when you go to the National Mosaic, you have different radar products that you can display. So you come up here back to your upper left-hand corner, do your down arrow, and here are the different radar products that you can display using the National Mosaic. Now what it defaults to is the QC base reflectivity. And so what that means is, is that it's it's wiping out all the different noise and the ground clutter. We call it false returns um, fr from the radar site. If you look at just the raw reflectivity, if you notice out here to the west, you'll notice a lot of ground clutter all of a sudden starting to show up. And so these are what we call false returns. And the radar knows that they're false returns. And so if you don't want to see all that, just go, just keep it on the QC quality controlled base reflectivity. And then it's a nice clean image. You don't have all those false returns in there. Um, you do notice some other image options in here as including precipitation type. Um, this is where the radar is trying to ascertain whether it's rainfall, whether it's snowfall, um, but this is at the radar beam elevation. So you have to be careful with this. So the example here is that if the radar beam is up at say 5,000 feet and this radar is, thinks it's detecting snow at 5,000 feet, as that snow falls, it could be getting warmer as it gets closer to the ground and then that snow melts and turns into rain. So have to be a little bit careful with this precipitation type product as it's, it's the precipitation type as the radar thinks it at the radar beam elevation, not at the ground. So just be a little careful with that. But for all intents and purposes, just keep it on the QC uh, QC reflectivity and this will give you the cleanest radar um, product, your cleanest radar con uh, image. Now. Other options, uh, you know, as far as radar display capability, go back up here to your two pieces of paper, um, the way it looks like the, kind of that overlay there. Um, click on it again, and now you can see I can, we were looking at national radar products. Now we can look at the individual radar station products. So when I click on this, you'll notice these different little blue dots show up on the map. So here's the Wakefield radar. We have the radar up in Dover, um, the Sterling uh, Virginia radar here near Washington. You see the Blacksburg radar has a dot. Um, the Raleigh radar has a dot, dot here underneath it. 
those warnings, and then you have the Moorhead City. So you can just click on the individual radar location, and it will call up just the radar products for that one site, that one location. And I'm gonna go back in here and turn these alerts off so you can just see the radar data. Now, when you go to an individual radar site and you look at the actual, you know, it says KAKQ because that's the radar location where, where, where that's our call sign. When you click on the different radar products available, now you see there's more options, you know, for you to actually view. Um, we have our super resolution base reflectivity, which is what you're seeing right here. It's the highest resolution reflectivity product that we have based on the radar scans. You can change it over to the base velocity. So this is looking at the Doppler winds, um, basically inside the, what the radar is detecting. Again, you can kind of zoom in and see what's going on. I can switch it over. I'll just show you a few of these. The one hour precipitation. So basically what's the one hour precipitation rate? Where's the heaviest rainfall falling you know, right now? Um, and so that's what you were seeing um, right here in this image. And you can also look at the what we call the storm total precipitation. So this is the radar trying to keep track of how much rain has fallen across the area, you know, throughout the entire rain event. So you can kind of see who's had the heaviest rainfall um, so far, maybe where there's been a little bit less rainfall, but that's our storm total precipitation uh, product. And there's several other pre uh, products in here. Uh, composite reflectivity um, can be popular. This is looking at the whole layer of the atmosphere um, as far as you kind of like looking at the radar image and then smashing a three-dimensional picture down into a two-dimensional picture. Again, I'm not going to get too much into actual radar products themselves. I just kind of want to show you how to interact with this. And again, once again, notice that as I change all of this information, you know, whether I change it to base velocity, no matter what I do, every time I make a change, the URL up here at the very top changes. Um, so every time I'm tweaking this page, the website up there at the top is always changing with me. So you can always bookmark it, you know, how you want to see fit. If you notice, I did move the map to the north and that went to the, the center of the, of the image, went to the Sterling radar. Notice how it kind of made that shift. And if I click over here at Dover, notice how it'll all shift over to the, um, the Dover radar. It just takes a second, but notice how all the map and the map layers are shifting there to Dover. So a neat way to kind of quickly move around from different National Weather Service offices, one to the other, once you're in this, local product um, interface you know once you go into this radar station product interface you can quickly move around to all the different national weather service offices you know if i want to click over here to blacksburg notice it'll shift really quickly and then all of a sudden the radar image now is based on what we're seeing off the blacksburg radar so really really neat interface now i'm going to go back to the national mosaic so i can see all of the different national weather service offices um, interlaced together um, and you notice those warnings and watches pop back up again. So I'm going to go in here and turn those off as well. So we'll kind of turn that off and we'll give the map just a second here. Uh, go back to the uh, upper left hand corner here with your different overlay options is weather for a location. So when I click on the weather for a location, uh, this is where I can go and click on the map. So we'll say for this example, a lot going on in Virginia Beach right now and uh, at the time of this recording. So we'll click on the Virginia Beach location and you'll notice when I click there, the map shifts. Uh, you notice I got this little point location. I can double click and as I double click, it'll continue to zoom in. And so this will give me the forecast. If I do the down arrow here, um, it'll actually load up the forecast information for the point, the location location for which I've clicked, um, as well as provide a link right back to the National Weather Service office in Wakefield. And any kind of watches and warnings that are currently in effect, if I do the down arrow, I can see the different watches and warnings that are, are, are right now valid. So if I click on these links, it'll give me a little bit more um, of, of the warning information since I clicked on the flash flood warning. If I want to see the warning in its entirety, I can just click the details um, and this will actually give me the entire flash flood warning at this time that was in effect for Virginia Beach. So it's a nice way to that overlay the current watches and warnings that are valid in addition to the actual radar information. Um, and I did that by again, going back to the upper left-hand corner, doing weather for a location, and then clicking on that spot. Um, if I'm interested in what's going on in Richmond, I can set the zoom here, do weather for a location. Um, I can click up here in Richmond. Um, and now as you see it moves my little, uh, tag up here into the city of Richmond. And now the current conditions and the forecast have all adjusted um, for the city of Richmond. And so here's my forecast for the city of Richmond and whatever alerts are currently in effect. Uh, you notice we have a flash flood watch. We have and a couple flood warnings at this point. There's a flood warning for, for the river um, in this example that was going on up there. And if I wanted to see more of that information, I can just click on it and get more of that flood warning information again and then go right to those details. Um, and again, I did that by going to weather for a location um, back here in the menu. If I go back to the National Mosaic, again, it will, it'll take me back to the composite 
national uh, mosaic of all the different uh, radars across the region. And again, as I zoom out, you can see all the different watches and warnings that are currently in effect. So that really walks you through how to use this interface. It's, it's really pretty easy once you 